Uh, I was born in China, uh, the city of Yangzhou. It's close to Shanghai, uh, about 300 kilometers away. And I was raised up in the uh, countryside. Uh, before I, uh, you know, know something about Buddhism, I have no, you know, religion background. I have never, you know, study or learn or practice other religions. I have a Master of Law degree. I uh, studied in Peking University. Yeah. And I got a bachelor degree and a master degree in Peking University from 1984 to 1991, seven years in that university. I used to be a lawyer in China. So uh, I was in Zhejiang province to deal with the, you know, you know, uh, a case, you know. And uh, my client yeah, is in that small town, and we visit uh, uh, our clients, and there's a small temple just by the river, and uh, uh, that is the first time I met with the master. But after ten years, you know, uh, he, he, the, the master contacted me again, and he said, "Oh, I would like to visit Beijing. I've never been to Beijing before." So, <laughs> so, so, okay. Okay, I, I said, okay, you are more than welcome to visit Beijing. I can you know, accommodate you. I can pick you up at the train station. So the master lived in my apartment for one week, and uh, he told me uh, you know, something about Buddhism. And oh, I realized that oh, Buddhism is not as I imagined before. Oh, they have some, you know, they have some. They have some wisdom in in it. So I began to learn. I began to explore, and I began to visit many many masters all over China. And also, I went to Taiwan to you know learn from them to ask questions. Yeah. At the very beginning, I had no interest to learn, you know, something more about Buddhism, because you know. Before, when I was uh, in high school, when I was in the university, some people told me that you know religion is not good things. So I just you know want to you know stay away from religions, you know. Uh, but when the master came to Beijing and uh, he told me something about Buddhism, I found that uh, things is not as I imagined before. The first thing I learned from Buddhism is that, is that the Master told me the goal of Buddhism are two things. One is be free from you know some bad things. For for example, you have to um, uh, you know you don't have to worry about something. Uh, the the second thing is that you can have much more wisdom. Oh, th these two things, you know, I love it. <laughs> so, you know, I began to study. I have been practicing Buddhism for more than 20 years. So, uh, in, the, in the first 10 years, I read a lot of books. I uh, visited many, many, many masters and uh, asked questions, learned from them. But uh, I still find that, you know, I, it is very difficult for me to break through. And uh, finally, I got a chance to to live in a temple in Taiwan. I, you know, concentrate myself. I forget about uh, anything else. I just concentrate myself, and uh, suddenly, I realized something. And I also realized that I have to do something for the whole world, because I found I realized that we. Human beings have big problems because we are on the wrong direction. So, when I came back from Taiwan, I you know meditated a lot, you know, and uh, many many times, at the end of my meditation, something came to my mind. It's a new idea. It's an excellent idea. 
about our human society's future and how to solve the problems. So uh, in 2014, I established a foundation in China. Why, you know, I wanted to promote something. And in 2017, I wrote a book. It was also published in Taiwan. In my book, I summarize the, uh, the, the essence of Chinese traditional culture. I summarize what's the fundamental problems of our, our human society. And I also pr proposed some solutions to those problems. And uh, I, made up, I made up my mind to pray for people all over the world since that time. The style of praying is traditional style of, prayer, of praying in China. It is called three steps and one bow. Uh, in Chinese, it is called san bu yi bai, three steps plus one bow. <laughs> okay, so it is very common in China. But you know, when I you know when the idea came to my mind that I I should pray for people all over the world. It also came to my mind that I should pray a distance that is equal to the radius of the Earth. So it is about you know six thousand three hundred and seventy-two kilometers. Okay, so in order to you know achieve the distance, you know I also you know, got the idea that, you know, I should pray in each city for 999 times. Because I, for each time, I walk three steps and one bow. So in each city, it will be about, you know, three kilometers. So in together, uh, in order to pray 6,372 uh, kilometers, I have to pray in 2,124 cities. Okay, so I and then I, 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 you know, you know, I explore which city I should pray in, and I found that the United Nations they have a list of cities with a population of more than three hundred thousand. There are more than one thousand and seven hundred these kind of cities in the world. Okay, so. This is the main part of cities I will pray in. But in some countries, for, for example, for in the United States, I also make my, made up, up my mind that I have to pray in each capital cities of all states. Even their population is not you know, as big as 300,000. Yeah. So altogether, more than 2,100 cities. Portland, I pray in Portland because, you know, there are many, many Portlands in the world. For example, in Oregon, there is a, another bigger Portland. But that Portland, the city's name is came from this Portland. So that's the reason. <laughs> because Portland is, is, is well-known city name. So I decided to pray in Portland. I also prayed in Augusta. Yeah. Continents uh, like you know China, uh, India, Australia, Egypt, Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, Brazil, uh, uh, Bolivia, Chile, 
Singapore, Thailand, and many, many European countries. Of course, United, United States and Canada and Mexico. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also prayed in uh, Greenland, Iceland, you know, I also prayed in, uh, uh, in Trumso in Norway, Norway. It's within the Arctic Circle. You know. I studied it uh, in April the 1st, 2018. This whole mission will take more than 21 years to accomplish. So far, I have been prayed in 334 cities. In the case of Portland, it's 334 city I prayed in. So in this city, I have accumulated 1,000 kilometers of praying on road. It will be done in 2039. Still 18 years left. <laughs> when I get, get done, I will be more than 73 years old. <laughs> When I was uh, in Ethiopia, there was a civil war there. People, they killed each other. And uh, when I uh, was praying on the road, I was got by some armed people. They pointed a gun at me. But they cannot speak English. I cannot say, say local language. But I understand that they want to take me away. So I just, you know, follow them, one per person leading me and, and the other per person, you know, uh, hold a gun and help <laughs> me. <laughs> okay, they took me to their camp, you know, a huge camp. And fortunately, their commander, okay, I came in, oh, very tall, very strong man. He can speak English. Okay, I told him what I was doing. And he asked, wow, because of the, because the, the, the pandemic is so serious, why, you, you, why, you know, I was daring to pray all over the world, why I was still traveling all over the world? Okay, I, I told him, I want to pray for people, I, I, I don't want to stop. And finally, he said, okay, you are a good person. <laughs> so he just let me go. When I prayed in, uh, in the capital city of Bol uh, Bolivia, okay, so because you know in that city most residents are local Indian people, so almost every family they have dogs. So the day I, you know, went to pray, you know, several dogs, you know, they just came to me and bark and and one one dog and two dog, you know bite me, and I, you know, got bleeding on my left legs, you know. And uh, finally, a young man came to uh, come up, and he helped me to get the dogs away. And I ha had two options at that time. One option is go to the hospital right away, uh, and the other option was to continue with my praying. But a voice from my heart said, it's okay, you can continue. So I just continue pray. After I finished praying, several hours later, I feel, you know, my left leg was paralyzed. But, you know, because I'm a practitioner of Buddhism, I know how to deal with this situation. So I just, you know, sit down and meditate for hours. I remember maybe uh, when I meditated for about two hours, you know, the paralyzed, you know, just disappearing. Everything is okay, and I know, no problem at all. When I, may, may, when I, you know, pray on on road, you know, it's kind of you know, you just like you know, you lost yourself. You are not doing some anything. So you will never feel, you know, too tired. But in some, some cases, for example, 
the temperature is too high. It is difficult for me. But for today, for example, today the temperature is not very high. Uh, okay, it's it's you know more comfortable. So in this weather, in this situation, I just feel like you know I lost my body. Now I have you know immersed with the whole universe. So I just you know you know you know I don't uh, look around. I just you know. Let it be. <laughs> uh, things like that. I pray for three things. First, I pray for people's happiness and self-improvement. Second, I pray for thoughts, ideas to be communicated and integrated. Third, I pray for the human society to be on virtual cycle of development. I pray for this three things. When I pray, first I count the number because I pray 999 times. So from 1 to 999. So I count the number. But at the same time, especially when I'm born and I touch my forehead on the earth, I pray. I, you know, recite these three prayers in my heart. I go to 100 cities all over the world each year, and in each city I spend three days. First day to arrive, the second day to find a road that is about, you know, at least three kilometers long, uh, kilometers long, and the road condition is suitable for praying. And the third day to pray, yeah. So in each city I spend three days, so in total I spend more than 10 months on road every year. Basically, I don't have enough time to accompany my family, and uh, I don't have time to earn money. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I learn a lot from traveling, from you know, communicating with local people. Because you know, in order to save money, I usually use you know, Airbnb. I live in a uh, residence instead of you know, hotel. Because in, uh, well, I, uh, well, I living in residence gave me opportunity to make food by myself. So, so that is, is also good for me to reach uh, local people, to see their real life, to communicate with them, to know what they are thinking about. Yeah. So I learn a lot of things from this experience. It is a good way to practice Buddhism, because you, you, you have to face many, many challenges, you know, language barrier, cultural barrier, and many, many difficulties. You have to keep your heart, all, you know, calm. Uh, you have to keep your calm to deal with all these kind of things. So it is not just, you know, learn from book. We learn from the real life. So it is very important for our Buddhists to learn from life, real life, not only book. So I think, you know, this travel experience gave me very good opportunity to learn from real life. At the same time, because, you know, I also uh, have some something in my mind. I was thinking, what's the problem of our human society? How can we solve the problem? Before I start pray, I have already have some idea in my mind. So I wrote the, the, those things in my book, but I have to go, you know, go to everywhere, go all, all over the world to communicate with people, to talk to people, to tell them my idea and get some feedback from them to improve my idea. So it is very helpful. The most important thing I learned that, you know, people's, you know, idea, people's mind or people's thought is just like a, a, the world we live in. The world has three dimensions. One dimension is a line, two dimension is square, three dimension is cube. So 
we can find that things happen in higher dimension. It's difficult to be understood for lower dimension. For example, there is a basket with some apple in the basket. If we want to take out the apple from the basket, it is very easy in three dimension. We just, you know, put our hand in and get the apple out. But it is difficult or impossible for two dimension because on square, if you want to get the apple out from outside of the basket, the brim, it is not impossible unless you break the brim. Okay. I, I learned that, I realized that our human beings, you know, thought, okay, also have dimensions. So well, I use the, the thinking level to describe these kind of things. You know, the first level of think, the formula is that if it, it is A, it must not be. For example, we can say Portland now is daytime. When I say it is daytime in Portland, it must not be nighttime now. So you only have one. You have to choose one. This is the first level. The second level, the formula is also A, also B. For example, a paper has both side A and side B. Side A is not side B. Side B is not side A. But side A and a side B, they cannot exist without the other side. They're always together. Okay, this is the second level of thinking. The third level of thinking, the formula is that A is B, B is A. They are the same and together all the time. So in China, we have a saying, water can carry a boat, can also overturn a, bo a boat. So we see everything, both good and bad. For example, food. Food is good, but if you eat too much, it will damage your health. Okay, so everything is both good and bad. So we have to find out the balance point, the middle point in Chinese traditional culture. Okay, so this is the third level of thinking. The fourth level of thinking, the formula is, not A, not B. Okay, we just mentioned the day and night. Okay, it is important for Earth, for our human beings, also for other livings on the Earth. But if we ask, is it now day or night in solar system, in galaxy, or in the whole universe? We have no answer. Because day and night are phenomena on, uh, of planets that rotating by themselves. So everything has a scope. Day and night is in the scope of planet, the uh, planet rotating by themselves. If we jump out of this scope, if we leave this scope, these kind of things doesn't exist. We cannot talk about it. So this is the fourth level. So I think our human beings, many, many of our human beings' problems are caused by lowest level of thinking. We have to move up. We have to take advantage of higher level of thinking to solve our social problems. You know, practicing Buddhism, especially meditation, will help you to realize to achieve higher uh, higher level of thinking. It is very important. I wrote a book, and I today I made a declaration, summarize the problems and uh, my proposal of to, to, to the solution. So I will tell people, you know, my idea. You know, when I pray all of the word. I will con you know, you know, communicate with local people and share with, with them my idea so that you know, more and more people realize that, oh, we have problems, we have, to, we have a better way to improve it. Uh, we deserve a better world in the future. For the first level, if our thinking is 
on the fourth level. First level is formula. It is, if it is A, it must not be. So people will fight each other. Because if you get this, I will lose. So it is a get and lose way of thinking. So there will be many, many disputes, many, many, you know, fights yeah, on the world. If our thinking move to the second level, we will realize that also A, also B, we are in the same boat, just like, you know, side A and side B work together. So we can compete, but at the same time, we can cooperate. We can make things happen together, not just fight each other. Okay, for the third level of thinking, something in, in our life, they happen. We cannot change the result. But everything has both good and bad. For example, yesterday, you know, we, 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 we cannot you know, mani mani manipulate the camera. That is a bad thing, but it is good because you have, you, if you solve the pro problem yesterday, you will do things you know, you know, better today. So everything, it, if you cannot change the result, we have to look at both sides, both good and bad. We can, you know, learn, take, take advantage of good side. For example, if, if we, we suffer something, we cannot change some, that result. We can also learn something from suffering. We can also grow up from suffering. Suffering actually can help you better to grow up. Okay, this is the third level of thinking. Okay, fourth level of thinking. Everything will pass away. Good, bad, success, failure. Okay, as time elapses, everything will gone away like a wind. You don't have to worry about it too much. Take it easy.